Sports Social Podcast Network. Football Gods is the podcast where we give celebrity fans ultimate power over the beautiful game. You can hear Ian Brody choose his ultimate football anthem. I think you'll never walk alone, which is a song about community, being together. I don't think you could have a better song. And understand, above all else, what annoys Nader Monoelha. The player who solely plays for themselves, but from the outside is perceived as being great for the team. Like some of these guys are the most toxic people you could ever wish to play with. Search the football gods wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to anfieldindexpro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to the Daily Red, your lunchtime catch-up on all things Liverpool FC and your daily reminder that the Reds remain top of the league. Uh, Liverpool have a cup final coming up against Chelsea and we got news over the last couple of days that Trent is set to miss that final. That's a blow. But we are well stocked at right back with Joe Gomez and Conor Bradley. My expectation is that Joe Gomez starts there with Andy Robertson at left back. I think Joe's been too good to not be in the team. And I think if Klopp has to pick between Connor Bradley and Andy Robertson, he will go with Andy Robertson. Now, Bradley would absolutely warrant a place in the team, given the form he was in before he had to take an unfortunate break to deal with the tragic passing of his father. But I think Jürgen being Jürgen, he will more likely go with his tried and tested Andy Robertson, which is fair. Robbo has earned that right. His form hasn't been great for two years now. But when he's good, he's still good. The issue is he's he's not consistently good anymore. He has a lot of poor games. And his best game is no longer the best left back in the world, which is what he was for a couple of years. But he's still good when he's on it. For example, our last game against Burnley, Andy Robertson was good. Up against Brentford, I expect that he'll start. If he puts in another good performance, you know, that's two in a row. Should he do the same against Chelsea in the cup final? That's three in a row. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we would call a run of form. Um, Dominic Zabozlai also potentially missing that final. Now, that to me is a bigger blow than missing Trent because Dominic's pressing and intensity in midfield is vital to us. And we don't really have anyone that can replicate it. Now, my expectation is that the midfield will be Curtis Jones, Endo, and Alexis McAllister in his absence which is a strong midfield, and one that you'll be happy enough to put out there, both against Brentford and against Chelsea. But Dominic will unquestionably be a big blow. There's been a lot of complaints in the last day or two about the medical staff because both of these players were out, came back, and got injured again quite quickly. I don't know where the line is, though. None of us know what the medical staff are telling the coaching staff. None of us know. None of us know what the players are telling the medical staff. Because the players aren't always open and honest about how they're feeling because they want to play. So it may well be that Trent told the coaching staff that the pain in his knee 
was no longer an issue when in truth it might well have been. But it certainly explains the poor performance against Arsenal in the poor first half against Burnley. He clearly wasn't ready to come back. And now he's going to face a little bit longer out of the team. Hopefully, himself and Dominic get themselves right and are back by the end of the month or early next month. We we desperately need Dominic in the team for City, without question. Uh, on This is Anfield. Six candidates for Liverpool's next sporting director, including West Ham chief. Um, so Tim Steed then is the one at West Ham. Worth pointing out, he's not the chief decision maker at West Ham. That is Mark Noble. But Steed Ten is their transfer, transfer and recruitment expert. Um, was responsible for the likes of Mohamed Kudus, the likes of Edson Alvarez in the summer. Where you want to look for his real work, though, is Werder Bremen and Bayer Leverkusen. And much of the Leverkusen team that you're seeing at the moment was his. Florian Wirtz is probably his biggest success in terms of bought for a small amount and now, only a few years later, probably a £100 million player. He was also responsible for bringing Kevin De Bruyne to Werder Bremen on loan way back in the day when he was the head of scouting. Um, Tim Steak Tennis is absolutely phenomenal as a talent spotter. Uh, another name here is Simon Rolfs. Now, Simon Rolfs is the director of sport. He's got an odd title at Leverkusen. He's not much of a talent spotter. That's not his bag. By his own admittance, he's talked about it in the past. That's not his area of expertise. He's more the steerer of the ship, a big picture kind of guy. Quite similar to Dan Ashworth. Quite similar to Dan Ashworth. Um, Paul Mitchell is the next one here. He's a very good talent spotter. He's been with Southampton, with Spurs, with Leipzig and with Monaco. He would make sense. Now, I've said before, I'd be very much in favour of us going the sporting CEO, sporting director model. So you've got the two tiers. Sporting CEO oversees the entire football side of the club, would basically be replacing Mike Gordon, who has made it quite clear he, he wants to leave and move back to America and do other things with his life now. Uh, he tried to leave, you'll remember, before and had to come back because certain people were making a mess of things. Um, Steve Ten and Mitchell would be much more the sporting director type. Simon Rolfs would be your sporting CEO type. Dan Ashworth would be a sporting CEO. Michael Edwards could do both, but he would want the sporting CEO role. He'd want the bigger the bigger mandate. He'd want the control. And he's earned it as well. Um... Sports Social Podcast Network. Richard Hughes, currently technical director of Bournemouth, currently working as notice. Uh, he would be a poor appointment. He was really, really poor at Bournemouth for a long, long time. And when the new owners came in, he got shunted to one side and has had no real input in anything since they took over, which is why he resigned and why he's working his notice. Um, So you would pass on him without question. And then you've got Monchi, who is Aston Villa's president of football operations. Monchi, incredible as a sporting director. I'm not as keen on him as in that higher-up role. When he was at Sevilla the first time, he was a pure sporting director and he was handling the day-to-day of all the recruitment and he was phenomenal. He went to Roma in a slightly bigger role. It didn't really work. And then he went back to Sevilla, basically running the entire football club. And again, it didn't really work. They did have some success. They did win 
multiple more Europa leagues, but league position was poor, a lot of poor signings. Monchi had his eye off the ball. He's at Villa now. I think he'll stay at Villa. I, to be honest, I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be pushing for him. Uh, two more names mentioned here. One is Michael Zork, who was at Dortmund for 25 years. If if he was going to be an option, he would have arrived while Jurgen Klopp was at the club. Uh, the next one here is Thiago Pinto, who has recently resigned from his role with, with Roma, was at Benfica prior to that. Did a very good job at Benfica, a little bit hit and miss with Roma. He's young. He's only 35, 36. He would be really good. I think he'd be really good. Now, would he be better than Tim Steed 10? No. But I would say that of this list, the two that are most likely are Tim Steed 10 and Thiago Pinto. I think they're the two that are most likely. It may be that Mike Gordon stays around and we go the sporting director, technical director route underneath him. So one that handles more big picture and one that is kind of specified towards recruitment. Steve 10 would be most suited to the recruitment role and somebody else potentially looking after the bigger picture. But we'll wait and see. I mean, who knows? We know that they approached Edwards. We'll wait and see if anything comes from that. Uh, I don't, for one second, believe the reports from Romano that he just dismissed it out of hand. Um, Just because I wouldn't believe anything Romano has to say. But I'd imagine... I'd imagine there is ongoing conversations happening with multiple candidates or the agents of multiple candidates for all the different roles at the club. Uh, Liverpool.com, there's a piece about Luis Alberto. Liverpool was right as playmaker hailed. Well, we sold him for pennies, so no, we weren't right. Uh, There's a piece about Michael Edwards, who's been linked to Newcastle. A piece about the new Bobby Firmino. There's a piece about Florian Wirtz and Alonso. There is a piece about the FSG investment in the PGA Tour. A um, piece about when we would learn about our Europa League draw and when we could face Xabi Alonso or the English teams. We can't face them until the round of eight. We can't play them in the round of 16. We're, we're, we're going to get somebody who's playing in this week's round, in the round of 16. Uh, piece about Jürgen, piece about, well, uh, this Jürgen and Ralph Ranić in the picture. Um, Thomas Frank no thank you a uh, piece about Thomas Tuchel handing Liverpool first test um, I, I guess this is because Tuchel's probably going to get sacked at Bayern and Bayern are known to want Xabi so you know next Liverpool manager already has new Jarrell Kwanzaa plan in place as two players fast track. So we'll have a look at that. Uh, Ace missing from training as Gary Lineker and Alan Shearer clash over greatest Liverpool striker. Okay. Um, Let's see. Amaro Nallo. And Carter Pinnington are the two players here that are apparently being fast tracked. Um, both are playing in the other twenty ones. Nalo is seventeen, Pinnington is sixteen. So yeah, to be fair, playing well up in the ages. Um, Nalo is the kid we signed in the summer, and was really, really highly regarded. There was a lot of talk that West Ham were devastated to lose him. So it's always a good sign. Um, Pennington has been with us since he was six. So I assume he is a local kid. Uh, on to Anfieldindex.com. 
Liverpool I 40 million Dutch Ford in oh no 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 Daniel Mallon absolutely not um there's a piece about Jurgen a piece about Liverpool's fastest players matches talking about the Europa League Andrew Beasley's latest piece is up it's about Darwin and then podcast wise There is an under pressure. There is the next dance part two. There's a pro plus with Eddie Gibbs stepping in for Dave Davis. And there is a scouted with Guy stepping in for me to talk about the Europa League, Chelsea and the F. Uh, So there you go. That's what we have. Lots more to come. Lots more to be recorded this week. Lots more to be written this week. Stick around. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds, and it means the world to the people who create these free shows. Sports Social Podcast Network.